Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAndLog.com. Hey, today we want to cover uh, forms of distortion found in an audio amplifier, uh, specifically Class D. Although not, you know, solely Class D, they can also be found in other uh, Class A, Class AB, Class B amps, okay? Uh, but we're gonna look at a Class D amplifier, so this is more specific to this particular uh, style of amplifier. We've got a bunch of amplifiers back here that I'll be reviewing, so I want to kind of cover the elements that we'll look at as we review these amplifiers, okay? And they're basically, I think you can break down the distortion in three areas. One is just a simple clicking sound when you or popping when you turn on the amplifier you turn it off you'll hear a pop and that could be no bueno if you have headphones on that can be not good so um might you know may not like that sound so uh, amplifier companies will put uh, soft starts they'll put time delays and techniques like that so that you don't hear that click or that pop so uh we'll make sure we check for that when we review these amps. Secondly, there's a noise floor, and that's when you hear that hiss or that shh, you know, sound, even when there's not music playing. And so, uh, if you have just noise there all the time, and then when you got music, that's your signal. They call that signal to noise ratio. You know, you want that to be wide. You want your noise floor to be really low, and you know, you want your signal to be a lot higher in amplitude so you don't hear that noise floor, of course. So we'll look at that too. And the third one is the one that's a little bit more harder to detect or to categorize because that's when you have non-linearities going on in your amplifier when your signal is not linearly following your input signal. You know, your input signal is a sine wave or it's a complex waveform and with an audio signal because it has to go from plus to minus and it has to cross that boundary you know there's these uh, transistors switching and there's some crossover distortion and some amplifiers some amplifiers more than others and uh, there's phase delay there's frequency there's all kinds of different things that can happen to cause these nonlinearities and so we'll take a look at that and kind of talk about that more as uh, you know in another video we'll get a little more deep into that subject but for now we're going to take a look at what they what these things look like on this board on a scope okay and we're just gonna see how it looks now one of the things you want to make sure when you check an amplifier if you just dial up say one kilohertz which a lot of testers you know they tested a certain frequency maybe a couple frequencies and they go and they test for power clipping they go there you go you know they look for distortion they go that's that's your rating but if you really want to look a little more deeper what you'll do is you'll cr go across a frequency band um, the amplifier may not be rated all the way from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz but you want to make sure it doesn't do anything strange during that those you know during that audible range either uh, maybe it's not audible for all of us but so that's the range we'll look at though is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so what you want to do is you want to make sure for one that as you put a sine wave in at 20 hertz and at 20 kilohertz and in between that, that you get the same gain you know so if you put let's say whatever it is half a volt signal on the input and you got a gain of you know 10 whatever it is you want to make sure that's the same gain across your whole frequency band, right? So that's one thing you want to look for. Another one is you want to make sure that your amplifier can handle the different loads that it might see. You might have an 8 ohm speaker. Well, if you only test the 8 ohms, that speaker's not always 8 ohms. It could drop down to 4 ohms. So, you know, most of these amplifiers are going to be rated at 8 ohms, so they might be rated at 4 ohms. But anyway, we'll look at 8 and 4 ohms to make sure that if that impedance through some frequency band um, drops in your speakers, say to 4 ohms, you want to make sure that you still get the same amplification of voltage, you know, that you still get the same, uh, that your signal is not distorted, right? So that's a form of distortion as well. So you get power distortion, you get, you know, um, nonlinear distortion across your audio band 
and you can get some other kinds of distortions. You may have the same amplitude, but maybe the waveform starts to get deformed a little bit. The Class D amplifiers, they use an LC filter on their output to smooth the waveform because um, they're not digital power supply or amplifiers. Um, you know, even though they seem like they're digital because they're on and off, uh, but they're not quite digital in that sense. They're, um, but they do slice the waveform up and they do modulate a square wave on the output and those waves form a sine wave but then the LC has to smooth it out. Well, the other thing that's happening is you have a top and bottom transistor that has to turn on and off as the signal crosses through. So it's kind of like a class AB amplifier where there could be some crossover distortion in a sense. It's, it's, it's a different um, way that that happens, but it, it, there is some kind of crossword distortion like that so your wave, your sine wave can kind of get tilted or kind of look kind of strange and all these distortions can cause even and odd harmonics um, sometimes people believe that even harmonics um, especially the second harmonic and say a tube amplifier you might get a second harmonic and some people say well that's more pleasing to the ear than an odd harmonic and then there's been tests done where people say, well, a third harmonic is no more pleasing or no more worse than a second harmonic. And and then, you know, in some cases, some you know, there's it's kind of leaned a little bit towards the third harmonic over the second harmonic in some studies from what I understand and some things I've read. Well, I think there's other factors that come in play too. Uh, if that other, those old, you know, like that other form of distortion, that second one we talked about, the noise floor being up a little bit higher, if that's up a little bit higher, that could be what people are hearing and they could be basing their decision, you know, on that versus the second or third harmonic. So, you know, who knows, but it's not a clear, well, some people, they firmly believe it's even harmonics, but anyway, um, you just want to keep your harmonics and your distortions as low as you can. So what we want to do is we want to compare these amplifiers and see how they work and see how they work across our frequency band. So let's bring the camera over here and let's take a look and let's do it. All right. Hey, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, let's go over the setup here. Uh, this is a Class D amplifier that we're going to be looking at. It has a the power chip underneath this heat sink has the supply caps and it has these inductors here with these capacitors that are very important parts. They form the LC filter for one of the outputs and these two box caps and these two inductors, two big guys here, form the LC filter for the other output. The right channel is the first two pins on this uh, header and over here is the left channel and the center is power. But you can also put power into here, which is what I'm doing in this barrel connector. And so it's this red and white wire that comes over here and goes off to my power supply. I'm using the GWN stack power supply, the GPC3030D. And this is the input. Okay, I'm using the right channel on this. It's on the other end of this shielded audio cable. So I'm going between shield and right channel. Left channel is just hanging there. So I'm coming in with this uh, Sigma SDG810 generator, okay? And by the way, at the, at the voltage levels I'm coming in at and audio testing I've been doing, the uh, distortion measurements are, from the generator are very good, much better than the specified uh, numbers, which are not bad either. Um, okay, so the output, like say, is over here, it's this green and red jack or alligator clip connected to the green and yellow wire that wraps around and connects to um, these two resistors. These are non-inductive, I mean pretty much non-inductive, 200 watts each, 8 ohms here, 4 ohms here, nice nice resistors. So I'm connecting to both of them here and this one I'm going to switch between 8 ohms and 4 ohms. Okay, so we're going to look at that that way. and. The uh, the coax here. Uh, put some tape on it one time to keep it strong. 
But anyway, the coax here is going to the THD meter, the Keithley uh, THD meter. That's a 2015. And then we have our uh, differential scope probes right here, coming over here into the diff probe. It's set on the X20 times 20 position. Okay, and this is the DP25 pin tech. And it has, it's powered by this little guy here that plugs into the wall wart in the wall. And this guy here, the coax goes to the scope. All right, so I think that covers the bench setup. The hand tech is looking at the current on the power supply right now. And we'll just look at that quickly too, just to see what that looks like. By the way, these buttons, I can uh, go volume down or up here. And then it has some other playback features has Bluetooth on this board by the way with the little crystal here and a little LED flashing kind of turns us on but we're not going to use all that stuff right now okay uh, we're just going to use the hard input here okay so then the hand tech it's set in one millivolt per 10 milliamps so the times 10 position it's the CC65 and I have to hit this degauss button I'll have to whenever you degauss by the way you have to make sure that no current's going through the thing because that kind of you want to zero it. You can't zero it when you have current flowing. So you have to disconnect it, degauss it, or make sure your signal's turned off. All right. Okay. Let's go look at the rest setup. Hey guys, just before we move on, I thought I'd just show you the data sheet that came with this uh, class D amp, so you can kind of see what we're working with. It works for 4.5 to 27 volts in, 50 watts times two. It says signal and noise. That's one of the things we want to look at. It says 102 dB, which is typical on some of these class D amps so that's a good number and uh, anyway there's the controls to set up that and okay just want to show you that and here's the SKU number got this on Amazon I'll put the link below in case you're interested okay guys so you can see the power supply up here it's set for 14 volts and it's in parallel mode and so I've got this one reading current and this one reading volts so the current's actually twice that number so it's about 0.6 amps going in right now so we're less than 7 watts probably and, uh, and I'm doing it this way I've got the current maxed out we're capable of 6 amps and we're, I'm using 14 volts because that would be kind of an average automobile uh, voltage but it doesn't really matter because we're not really testing the, we're not reviewing the amplifier right now as far as power capability we're going to just look at distortion types okay right, let's go to the scope setup all right so I uh, let me get rid of the menu here well let's hit channel one Th that's the scope looking at the input signal it's DC one meg inverts off bandwidths full and I got the voltage probe set at times 10 okay that's where we're supposed to be times 10 okay this channel 2 DC same stuff full bandwidth we're not doing any kind of bandwidth filtering and probe is 20x for the differential probe okay and then channel 3 in case we look at it the current which we're looking at right now it's up here it's DC inverts off 1 meg full bandwidth and it's set up as a current probe because that's what it is so I got current selected 10x 10x position so let's turn off the menus now what I've done is I've turned on the measurement things where I just go to measure and add measurement and then I can go here and I have to say what source channel 3 for instance and then come up here and select which measurement I want so I've done that and I can do up to on this scope which is really nice Right now I've got two, four, five, six. I can have eight of them all at one time. So that's really a nice feature of this uh, GWN stack. And right here I'm set at half a millivolt per division for the input. The output is set for four volts per division. And the uh, current is 200 milliamps per division. You kind of see the current up here. Now the position's right here for the current. I just push this button in, it centers it right there and same thing for the channel 2 which is the blue one and same thing for channel 1 okay now I also have the cursors on you can see the cursor turned on so when I turn the cursors around uh, horizontal so I got the horizontal guys up there now one thing about the cursors 
they're colored purple right now so if I touch the blue one they turn blue so now they're tied to the blue signal instead of the top purple if I hit one they they turn yellow for the channel one blue so that's why I'm gonna do it right now for the output okay so if I move one of them whoops I gotta hit the cursor and then when I move this it moves the one that's uh, bold or and then there's a dash color one so I put that at the waveform right there and then I click on this and I can move this around okay so I'll, I'll use that later and I'll show you why we're gonna use that okay for the time right now time division we're gonna move that around but right now I've got it set here let's turn off that 100, 100 microseconds per division we'll change that this is a 10 kilohertz 10.45 kilohertz coming in right now and our trigger is channel one the yellow one and rising edge 200 millivolts and I got a high frequency filter on just just for fun I guess um, so you can see me moving the trigger around right there changes the voltage there changes the arrows here and it's the other arrow is in the center of the screen so that cross here right there is where it's triggering okay I hit trigger menu I can set that up channel one and auto mode is where I'm set I've got this high frequency reject. I can go to DC, AC. So I just stuck on the height. Seemed like it was a little steadier there. So, okay. Rising edge, of course. I said that. Okay, so I'll just turn that, that menu off. And uh, another thing I can do is go to acquire. And it's set for 100K points right now. That's kind of in the middle. I could go 10 meg max. That's maximum memory for deep memory if I was going to zoom in or do something. If you don't need that, it can slow down your measurements a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to just put that up there for now. That way we're sure we're not going to miss anything. All right, so I started off by putting a 1 kilohertz signal in. I'm going to turn off the current for now. Okay, so we can focus on the input and output voltage. Now, you see they're inverse. Uh, what I've just realize is on my on my output I hooked up my leads backwards I just noticed that I looked at the data sheet because I saw they're reverse so let's go channel 2 instead of me changing all my probes I'm just gonna say invert so just invert it cover my mistake there all right so guys at 1 kilohertz I'm gonna put this cursor right at that amplitude right there but you know what let's bring up the amplitude a little bit higher Okay, right there, it starts to clip. We've seen that before, right? So that's 5.8 total harmonic distortion. And that's uh, 0.3. And that is 0.04. All right, so we're about a 0.05 distortion THD right now. And our output is 8 volts, 8.19 volts. Okay, yeah, right there we're hitting 0.6. So, see we go from 0 0.05 to 0 0.6. So, I'm going to just say this is our peak right here where I'm putting this line. That's where our max amplitude is before distortion, okay? Okay, let me turn off those that menu so we can see the full screen. Okay, guys, so now what we want to do is we want to go to... Um, we want to increase our frequency okay so I'm gonna just take the dial and start sweeping it up now look right there you notice that it starts dropping off already so one kilohertz is kind of a top now hold on a second let me take this other cursor I'll take this other cursor and put it at the top of our our input signal okay so you can see if that's going up or down okay okay now let's go higher frequency now you look at our input signal it's still still the same amplitude but we've lost amplitude on our output signal so I'm gonna go I'm at 12 kilohertz I'm at 14 15 I'm gonna go to 20 kilohertz so our amplitude we're down to 3.7 volts Okay, now I'm going to go back to 1K. There's 10K. We're up to 5.5 volts. 5K, 4K. There's 4K. We're 
and you know that's 2k okay let see there's 4k 2k that's 2k right there you can kind of see what frequency I'm at right here by looking at the counter if you can see that here let me zoom on the screen a little tighter all right so now you can see a little bit closer um, I'm at 2 kilohertz and let me get rid of that menu for you that's 1 kilohertz and we're down at 400 hertz so it looks like it's kind of flat between 400 hertz and 2 kilohertz maybe let's go down a little bit lower okay we're 100 hertz okay that's about 120 hertz I see it starting to drop okay I'm gonna go down to 20 hertz there's 20 hertz you can see 20 hertz here so you can see that the amplitude we have amplitude distortion power distortion uh, because of our amplitude changing okay so there's a so if we plot this you know curve um, we'll see how that works out okay okay so we've seen the amplitude drop we're going to do a little graph on this but the other thing it's pretty obvious that they're not in phase anymore right so we got some phase uh, delay too so we got some phase distortion as well so let's pull up our cursors go in and just see what we have here I'll go be where the crossing points here and just see what the time difference is okay that's about that's probably about right it's about 10 milliseconds uh, change between the two alright so let's keep an eye on that and let's go back up in frequency I'm at 20 Hertz okay I'm gonna go to 40 40 Hertz alright so the amplitudes coming up see what the time has changed to they're closer together now now there's 3.28 milliseconds and we're at 6.28 volts out all right so let's go up in frequency we'll go up to 100 Hertz okay so the 100 Hertz it looks like the amplitude is just about where we were and we're a lot closer and our, our time change difference here is a lot closer let me move over and measure that again okay and now we're 560 microseconds from each other all right let's go up in frequency and the amplitude at 120 is eight oh about eight volts. We'll go to 200 hertz. Okay, we're 8.17. It's gone up slightly. And here, let's spread this out so I can get a measurement. I'll spread it out nice and wide. Okay, put the blue in where it's crossing that line, and the yellow's crossing maybe right there. So 100, 108 microseconds. All right, let's go up in frequency. We're gonna change the time base so we can see it. Let's go up to 500 hertz. Okay, what I wanted to kind of do is go to the frequency where it looked like the, they start crossing the same. I'd say right about there they're both crossing okay so that's uh, 320 Hertz and we're at 863 volts but let, here uh, let's get a few more cycles to make sure we get a good reading 8.8.16 volts so we have okay so it doesn't look like we've gone up in any more in voltage so let's go up in frequency until we see another change okay so things are things are looking good here we're at 
700 hertz here I'm gonna start going a little faster we're just starting to drop in voltage I'd say right about there is where we're we're still holding steady nice and strong but actually our frequency starts shifting again so I'm gonna go back down to frequency until we can see where they were still okay right about there well I'd say right about there they're both crossing so that's about 420 Hertz <clears throat> and the voltage is the voltage is still about 8.1 volts so let's go up in frequency until we see the voltage drop just trying to find the spot where we're under 8 volts I'd say we're just dropped below 8 volts there 7.99 and we got a shift in frequency again so let's measure that again now if you notice before the output was coming before the input now it looks like the inputs coming in front <coughs> okay and it's about 25 microseconds all right so we're seeing a little shift let's let's keep on going now because the frequency is going up this shift the freak hopefully the time's going to be pretty short unless we get drastically different let's see what happens um, let's go to 3k okay that's a little bit more four five let's go to 10k and take a measurement okay that's 10k okay there's at 10k we have 5.5 volts and now here's something else that's happening let's get this time uh, now if I was trying to get really precise on measuring this um, you know I could spread them out really wide so I could see where they're crossing but you know just for this uh, demonstration I think this is good okay so that's about 10.4 microseconds and again the input voltage before the output voltage where before on the low frequency we're the other way around okay so the other thing um, that's happening is pretty obvious you can see as it crosses there's some little wiggle and then a little bit of distortion up here and a little wiggle and it's not it's not as smooth and clean as the yellow one right so there's some distortions in there as the LC filter is trying to smooth out the switching and trying to keep a nice smooth waveform so we're starting to see a little distortions there okay now let's just go up to 20 kilohertz there's 11 now we're at 19k I'm gonna go at 20k now if you notice there's ripple if you can see that okay can you see the ripple as well so we have some ripple stuff going on it, it's kind of like not a really great sine wave but the amplitude is 3.55 volts I mean it looks large because you saw me change this right so we're really down here you know and relative to our cursor we're, we're down here so we're at 3.54 volts and even if we get a few more waveforms to get better reading 3.55 volts 3.54 so that's pretty good so we're, we'll take a time measurement here between the phases as well that one crosses there that one crosses there and that's 13.7 microseconds okay so this is kind of some high frequency stuff it's probably beyond our hearing range but you know still it's something that's there right 
Now I'm going to read you the THTs and I'm going to go back to the frequencies that we stopped at before so I can show you the graph on that too. Um, but right now we're at 0.012 so total harmonic distortion is actually looking pretty good. Now one thing about that is the Keithley meter, I'll have to look at the bandwidth of that again, but it is meant for audio frequency range. So if this is um, in the megahertz, it probably is not reading that, okay? But we're going to look at the spectrum in a moment and we'll be able to see things there, okay? Here, let it... Okay, so let's go to 10K. Let's go back to 10K and let me just go through the THG readings real quick. Okay, guys, I brought the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. The frequency here, 18K, and you see the THG reading. Okay, so we're at 0 0.01 to 0 0.015 right now with uh, the 18K. I started bringing it down before I brought the camera over, okay? So we're going to bring it down to 10K where we had the other measurement. And see, we're at 1.22. I'm going to round that up to 1.23. Okay, now let's keep on dropping it down. The next measurement is at 2K. Okay, we're at 2K, and you see it 0.124. All right, then the next one is at 420 hertz. Okay, bring the arrow over here. Let's come down to 400. I think that's close enough. Uh, 0.044, pretty darn good. All right, let's go to 300, and it's about the same. Let's go to 200. Okay, 200, it's about the same. Hasn't really changed much, 0.048. Okay, we're gonna drop down to 100. Okay, 0.05, I don't know, it's kind of bounced around. Okay, it kind of goes up to about 0.055 a lot, so I'm gonna go there. All right, let's quickly go down to 40. About 0.07 maybe, and Let's see what 20 was. Okay, that's 0.12. Okay, so now we're back to the scope. Let's go into the math mode. Let's look at the spectrum, okay? FFT. Okay, uh, let's go Let's go to black one. I think that's better for the better filter. Okay, we're going to look at channel 2. That's the output. DB setting and vertical. Looks like it's set well. Um, horizontal 10k per division we're 250k center of the screen let's let's put the center of the screen at 10k and 2k per division okay so 10k and 2k so let's turn off these menus I'll turn off the cursor to get that menu out of the way okay that's the audio spectrum 10 kilohertz is in the middle and let me move the waveforms up Like I say, I'm, uh, I've mentioned in other videos, I hope to get an update soon that I can get rid of these cursors. But okay, so you can kind of see, right now we're still at 20 hertz, so we're down here and we're putting in this signal and there's just this noise. Our, our signal's probably up here at 20 hertz and this is just noise. Now the noise floor we talked about is this thing across here, that hissing thing, and it's pretty low because zero db is up here and every time you go down 20 db it's 10 times the signal so it looks pretty good right now here let me bring the frequency up oh you know what i am going to drop the amplitude down so it doesn't get in our way now when i do it doesn't have much as much resolution so the noise floor comes up you notice that See how, as I, here I can turn off channel one for now. But if you notice, this noise floor went up when I made this smaller. See how, as I make it smaller, noise floor comes up. It's having a harder time uh, reading noise to signal when I do that. So that's kind of a trade-off. That's why I want to get rid of this signal. So let me bring it up a little bit higher. But anyway, so you can see the noise floor is pretty low. This is 60 dB. That's pretty low. 0 dB is up here. And you can see the noise through here. So if you just watch that as I bring the frequency up, there's 90 hertz. I don't really see anything of significance right now. Our THD is low, so that makes sense. So I'm up to... 300 now
Now this first grid is 2K, so let me get up to 2K and then you'll be able to, I'm getting close to 2K. Okay, that's two kilohertz, so you can see our signal came in. Now, once it got enough samples, it squeezed it into a really narrow spike right here, but our 2K signal is right there. And if you look at this reading right here, this reading picks out the, the largest signal. It says 2K 17.6 dB. Okay, let me zoom in on the screen so you can see it well. Okay guys, so there you go. I'm zoomed in, now you can see the screen better. That two kilohertz is our, our peak right here, 17.6 dB. Now, let me go ahead and bring up that frequency. 3K, okay, now at 3K you can see this spike now right here. But you don't, there, there's some harmonics, there's some noise down here, but they're not too bad. THC is 0.2. 4K, you see the red jump over, 5K, it'll take a moment, there it goes. Now, again, if you look across here, I don't see a lot of noise, and our THC is 0.46, so not too bad. Okay, there's 6K, okay, I'm going to go to 10K, okay, there's 10K right in the middle. See 10K, 14.4 dB. Now if you divide those numbers by 20 and take the anti-log, then you should get the same voltage measurements we, we saw before. All right, so now I'm going to go up to 20K. Okay, so now it's at 20K, it's right on the border. But anyway, you don't see any subharmonics. They call them subharmonics. And you'll get kind of divisions of the frequency on the bottom end and they call those subharmonics. I don't see any subharmonics. So hey guys, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that helped uh, understand some of this noise that you can get from an amplifier. Now if you notice the frequency was pretty much spot on in every instance. So we didn't really see frequency distortion which is possible but we did see phase distortion. It led at one point and lagged at another point and also we saw some amplitude distortion, right? So I'll put that together in a graph and show you that next video. This one went kind of long, so um, I think you kind of saw what was happening there though. And I hope, uh, you know, looking at the scope and the setup helps you learn how to use your equipment too, or if you're thinking about buying some equipment. Um, but yeah, hey, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. This is just a continuation of our distortion uh, talks, okay? We're going to start reviewing the boards, and now when I discuss certain types of distortion, you'll have a good understanding of what we're talking about, okay? All right, hey, thanks, guys.